Baruch Hashem Yahweh, Baruch Hashem Blessed be the name of Yahweh, King of Lasting. To the Bible for all that you have done for me, all that you have done for us. Please forgive me for my sins, my transgressions, and my iniquity. And please forgive us as a whole for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity. And please give us the strength to forgive one another so that we may be forgiven for our sins. And I ask that you may be merciful upon us. Please remember that we are dust. And I ask that you may give us the opportunity to repent and turn from our evil ways. And I ask that you may put your words within our heart. And I ask that you may circumcise our hearts so that we are able to do that which is good. And I ask that none of us would desire to do that which is evil. I ask that you may continue to purify us and wash us daily from all manner of filthiness. And I ask that we will not be defiled by the evilness of this world, but the evilness of this world is being multiplied each and every day. But I ask that you may do your marvelous work in each and every one of us, so that we may multiply in righteousness. I ask that you may fight against those who fight against us, and I ask that you may continue to wash us and purify our hearts. And I ask that we would never become enemies of you, but I ask that we could be allies of you. I ask that we would not desire to do anything that is contrary to your Torah, but I ask that we will all desire to please you. I ask that we would delight ourselves in your Torah, your word, and I ask that we would never see your word, your Torah as a burden or as a curse. But I ask that we will continue to do your service and I ask that those who have not began to do your service, I ask that you may be patient with them and give them all the tools that they need to do your service. And I ask that you may strengthen your people across the four corners of their rest to earth, strengthen all your people, prepare us for war, the warfare and the flesh, our soul. And I ask that our enemies will not have victory over us, but I ask that we will have victory over our enemies. And I ask that our desires that are contrary to your Torah would not have the victory over us, but ask that we would have the victory over our desires. I ask that you may give us all the desires of our heart as we continue to seek you, as we delight ourselves in you. And I ask that you may give wisdom, knowledge, understanding to Adon who as he brings forth the discussion, and as it may be well with us, it may be well with him. And I ask that you may continue to be patient with us. And please remember that we are seeking the paths of old. And many of us did not grow up following your Torah. So I ask that you may be patient with us. And I ask that we would never see your grace and mercy as a license to sin, but ask that we would see your grace and mercy as a love and as an opportunity to repent. I ask that you may accept this tough or this prayer for being your will. And I ask that you may bless and keep those who are on this call and those who are not on this call. Let your will be done. Bahashim Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha. Blessed you are, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh. And blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh in truth. Amen, Amen, Stella. So be it. Salah. Hallelujah. Erev Tov. Good evening, our King. Um, it is Yahak. Azariah, Azariah who, and first and foremost, all praise, glory, and esteem belongs to the almighty creator of heaven and earth, who has given us the opportunity to come together once again, that we may dive into his word, that we may connect as brothers, that we may continue to build upon one, build with one another as we are along this journey that we call life. Um... First and foremost, I want to start off by saying um, Toda Yehoah for the things that has been revealed to me over these past couple of weeks and my my thoughts of reflection. Um, Toda Akin for just being the brothers that you are. I, I know that this walk is a lonely walk when you don't have brothers. To, to walk with you. So I'm thankful that the Most High has placed you brothers in my life that we can walk this walk together. I have a question. And I want, I want your brothers to really think about it. If a brother came to you, and some of y'all been in this walk long enough that this may have actually happened, 
But if a brother came to you and says, I don't think I'm an Israelite any longer. I, I, I don't I don't think I'm an Israelite. How does that make you feel? And what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of that? Or when you hear that? You can come off mic. You can raise your hand. Um, I see Shalomo with your hand raised. Aki. Okay. Oh, K K Shalomo Kim. Uh, just for me, just thinking about that, it would make me very sad because that makes me feel as though that that brother has given up. I mean, he he knows the truth. He knows of the Most High. And he probably has had positive experiences with the most high in Mishpachah, but it's like something's going on in his life for a season to where he has led himself to believe that he can't do this walk anymore. Or the walk is way more painful than when he was in the world. And really for me, I feel like everybody would want to blame the brother, but I kind of also want to look at, you know, what is his support system around him and how has that led to that bolt, that brother falling to the wayside? And that's just really how I think about something like that. But um, I, to answer your question, sad, very, very sad, but I yield back to you. Kane, Kane, I'm not going to speak on it yet. Um, I see some of the hang, hands, but I want y'all to remember what Shalomo said and what everyone that raised their hand says. Um, I, Tommy, I see your hands raised. Shalom, shalom. Um, so I haven't been in this walk long, right? But I, I, I was Muslim for twenty years, and I've so I, I, I've never heard a brother say I'm not going to be an Israelite. Like, I didn't even think that was a thing, right? But understanding backsliding and understanding how this world can weigh us down. So in Islam, I heard brothers say it all the time. And it, it's it's disheartening. It makes your heart heavy. So if if I was to hear a brother say that I'm not an Israelite anymore or I don't I don't believe the the, the Hebrew walk is for us, it it will be heavy and I would really want to know what's going on because what we don't do and what I've understood that we didn't do and especially in Islam is we don't check on our brothers. So not for a brother to say like, yeah, I'm, I'm straight. I don't, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a Hebrew Israelite anymore. I'm gonna feel like I dropped the ball because I left him high and dry because he's been dealing with that for a minute. And I didn't know it until he just gave up. So I will feel really, I will be hurt. I will be hurt. And I yield. Okay, okay. I studied Islam for a couple of years. And I definitely understand what you mean, especially when you don't have brothers there to help you in that journey. You kind of just fall to the waistline. So I understand exactly what you mean. Um, Shasha Marcy, your hand raised. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in a car. Can, can I be hurt? Can. Can, yeah. So I would tell that brother, um, I'll say whether you believe you're an Israelite or a Gentile, you know, the whole duty of man is to fear the most high, keep his commandments. And then I would tell him, if you're in a room with a hundred people who claim to know Yod here, why here, the most high, I would say, and you're not friends with none of them, or you feel like everyone has something against you, I would say you still have a duty to do the most high's will to do his service. And I'll also tell them, you know, this walk, you know, it's about the people, but it's also not about the people, meaning that it doesn't, I don't allow any man or any woman to take you away from the most high. You know, things are going to happen with people, but at the end of the day, it's your relationship with the most high. When, you know, on Judgment Day, when, or when the most high looks upon the earth, he's not going to, you know, take what other people do and add it to your record. You know, everything is about what you do as an individual. So if you have to do some things on your own, you have to be in the season of confusion. Just keep your focus on the most high, yeah, 
and he will provide. Just like Sahelim or Psalms uh, 121, one of my favorite verses, you know, I look up to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from Yah, the maker of the heaven and the earth. And then also, you know, other scriptures that talk about, you know, if you do what the Most High tells you to do, he's going to bless you, he's going to provide for you. So I would say if it's people, don't focus too much on the people, focus on your relationship with the Most High. If people wrong you, just use that as ammunition to seek the Most High 10 times more. You know, are you? You know, of course, I'll pray for the brother too. Are you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, brother's coming out with some heat. I like this. Um, saw your hand in, and then I see saw Yosef, and then uh, I'm going I'm to bring it back. So, saw your hand in. Hallelujah. Hold on. Told out for this question, man. Oh, man. I tell you, if I had a brother that come there, for one, I talk to the brother, have a conversation with him. Um, sometimes, our brothers, our men, we battle with in self. And sometimes we might feel that, hey, we don't have that strong support from our brothers. So, yes, nothing's supposed to turn you from the most high. But sometimes it's told to have your brothers. And my thing I see out here, man, sometimes we have a lot of, in this walk, we have a lot of kings who want to look good and say, Tori this and Tori that. But we don't have enough ables. We don't have enough brother keepers. You know, we don't have the brothers that reach out, man. Um, I know y'all get a message from me every week, man, because when I first came into this walk, I already know my story came in this walk. I was about to be one of the brothers to fall away. But my brother keeper kept checking on me. And me and my brother keeper had conversations sometimes with light hours. And sometimes we need that. And that's why I told y'all for this men, meet men instead of we come together on Tuesdays. Because man, this is this is told, man, because we all battle with something. And sometimes we need our brother to lift her up when we down. And man, I'm a year from that, man. I I love what you've gone with this so far. I keep I yield. Dang, I love I like I like that perspective as well. All right, um, sorry, Joseph. I'm glad I'm glad that you had a successful surgery. Um, I love to hear what you have to say, Aki. Yeah, can't. Okay. Uh, shalom, shalom, Akim. If I do sound a little uh, parched, that's because I am. Um, that surgery got me high and dry right now, but um, I definitely wanted to uh, take the opportunity to speak on your on this question because it's a. Uh, it's a very, very, very thought-provoking question. And uh, I'm kind of in the same vein as uh, Sarah Johanna and uh, Don Tommy for um, speaking their thoughts. Um, <clears throat> in regards to uh, a brother or somebody coming saying, like, you know, they renounce uh, being, being a Hebrew Israelite, uh, a couple of things come to my mind. It's more like I would be saddened. I truly would be saddened. Um, it makes me believe that we as brethren are not doing our responsibility, our job into uh, making it, I would say making it a reality, right? And I say that because it can get a little uh, churchy sometimes, right? It can get a little bit of, it can turn into an organization very quickly. And uh, I talk to my Isha about this all the time. I was like, I, I I got in I got it into my mind now, right? Uh throughout my years of uh being in this walk <clears throat> that um I don't see um congregation this or assembly that or um you know uh, some form of organization. I see it as a family now because that's how I have to view it. If I view it any less than that, then the whole concept and the thought becomes very convoluted. And a lot of times it does fall on the, on the uh, support systems that are there to ensure that this is a reality, right? Like we are the children of the book and this is the reason why X, Y, and Z. X, y, and Z. So um, <clears throat> for that brother to even have that in that mind, Cain, just like Adon Tommy said, 
Uh, this this thought has been festering for a while, but how much so have we been dropping the ball for a while? I'm saying we. I'm talking about the 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 um, the brothers that's supposed to be there lifting each other up, the support systems that are supposed to be there within the congregations that are local, and, and it can stem it can stem so far um, with the thought that it's not even funny. Um, it really just begs the question, like, are we making this tasteful? Uh, we just had a, um, a lesson not too long ago in regards to um, making this making this something that is tasteful for our children even, right? I uh, forget the word that's there in Deuteronomy, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want to say it's 7 through 9. But it says that you're supposed to teach your children diligently. That word that's there is supposed to be uh it's supposed to be sharpen, but it means wet too. Like you're wet, you're like you're sharpening a blade. But you're supposed to make this walk in a sense tasteful. Now it got it got me thinking, so it's like, wait a minute. That's not only supposed to be applied for my children, that's supposed to be applied for everybody that comes in contact with me. When they come to me. Now you can start to invoke, you know, being the salt of the earth, seasoning everything that you do with salt before you actually offer it up to the creator. If you hand it up to a person high and dry, they're not going to take it. They're not going to accept it. It's going to be actually uh, an abomination to them when they're actually trying to partake in the fruit that you're giving. So it, it really does beg in the question, like, what are we doing as individuals that are proclaiming who we are whose we are and who we serve and how are we delivering this message to the four corners of the earth to gather the body of the, of the most high. I'll let my plan on that. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. I, I, I can, I love you. I can. Y'all hit on so many points. Taking accountability where we may have dropped the ball praying for the brother, looking at the characteristics of our actions. Um, Star hit it on the money. And I'm, I'm going to just say that for now. But each and every one of you brothers came out with a magnificent point that I, I want everyone to kind of just keep in their, the back of their mind. But the interesting thing is the brother never once said, I'm turning away from the Most High. He said, I'm turning away from being an Israelite. See, the, the thing that we, we kind of come across quite often is we assume that when someone says that they no longer want to be an Israelite, that that also comes with that they, they no longer want to keep Torah. But like Shah said, whether you are Israel or Goim, the whole duty of man is to serve the most high. So sometimes we jump the ball, you know, because we are thinking, oh, he doesn't want to be an Israelite no more. He never said he doesn't want to serve Yah. He never said he wanted to um, keep Torah. He said he don't want to be an Israelite. The reason why I'm bringing this up it's because nowadays we make being an Israelite seem like a burden more than a blessing. It's almost as um, going back to what Shai said, don't allow your Torah to be a curse or a bar burden upon us. But we allow this walk to be seen as a burden or a curse. We already know the children of Israel have been cursed because of their lack of obedience. That's what Deuteronomy 28 is all about. So that's the first thing most Israelites come across is, oh yeah, you're an Israelite because we are cursed. We automatically assume that we are Israel coming into this walk, unless you're born and raised under the thought that I'm an Israelite because I'm cursed. Who wants to be an Israelite because they're cursed? rather than being an Israelite that's walking in the blessing. So when we're allowing the curse to be more of a forehand or a foresight rather than the blessings, we are now making being an Israelite seem like a burden or a cursed thing. 
this is the thing that's been pondering in my mind over the last couple of years. I mean, over the past couple of weeks. Because when I'm thinking about being an Israelite, I'm not so caught up nowadays on being an Israelite. I'm more focused on being a servant of the creator, going back to what Sar Yosef said. Our character, how we how we interact with one another, how we interact with the other nations. People should see Yah in us. They shouldn't worry about, oh, he's an Israelite. No, they should see Yah. Not Israel, Yah. I work in um, T-Mobile. I see customers every single day of all faiths, all um, nations, and I treat people the way I want to be treated. That's my motto. I've been invited to churches, to mosques, to kingdom halls, all based upon the conversations I've had because they was tell me, I see God in you because of how you interact. I don't have to say I'm an Israelite. They can see my zits. They can look at my name. They can have questions. But they said, what does your name mean? The first thing I says, my help comes from Yah, or my help comes from God. And that right there, they don't even know it's Hebrew. They just like the meaning that the fact is, my help comes from the creator. So they see as me being a man who believes that God is my help, and they seeing how I like to help others do my actions, they're looking at me. And they will say, oh, he's just like me. He's a Christian, but I'm not a Christian. Oh, he's a Muslim, but I'm not Muslim. He's a Jehovah's Witness, but I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. And this kind of brings me back to what Paul said, I'm all things to all men. And in my mind, I'm really understanding what that means. I don't have to stop being who I am in order to be who others portray me as. Because if I'm operating or emulating or imitating the characteristics of Yehovah, Yehovah created every single one of us. So when people see Yehovah in you, it's automatically going to connect them to you. But when we allow things like pride, ego, the, the, the wickedness or the deceitfulness of the heart remove us from what the creator asks us to be, we are no longer being that kingdom of priests. We are now becoming that accursed thing that we constantly read about in Deuteronomy 28. We are allowing the disobedience, the, the hatred, the evilness that we have done to one another, not even the things that we've done to the other nations, because the Torah is more about how you treat your brother and sister. So we have become a curse because, yeah, we saw after the ways of the other nations, but also the ways of the other nations were against us. So if we're seeking the ways of the other nation, that means we are going against Torah because we are coming against our own. So I said in his prayer, have patience on us because we were not in this walk. But we fail to have a patience for our brothers and sisters who are not in this walk. We see it all the time when we watch some of these videos on how brothers come across. I would love to be on the street corner talking to brothers and sisters about coming into this way of life. But I will be honest, this way of life has become sloppy. The church is more organized than being an Israelite. The Muslim community is more organized than being an Israelite. Satanism has become more organized than being an Israelite. A satanic cult just won $200,000 in a lawsuit because the school would not allow them to have a club. Now they have a club in the school system, education with Satan. But we can't get Hebrew to be taught. We can't get a Hebrew after afternoon um, program with Hebrew Israelites. All the other nations are doing what they see is best for them. While we're sitting here fighting one another because of how we wear our fringes or zitzis, 
how we keep the new moon, how we keep the Shabbat, whether it's day or evening. We don't keep Torah. So we have become an accursed thing. I was on the phone with Maury Hannon and I, um, the other day. Me and him, we were just talking. And we was talking about prayer and meditation and how when you're praying, that's when you make your supplications known to the Most High. But also the Most High already knows where you're coming from because he sees everything. But when you're meditating, you're staying quiet and you're listening for the answer of the Most High. And he brought up Joshua when they just lost the battle against AI. And Joshua came falling on his face. And the Most High says, why are you on the ground? You lost the battle, yeah? This is a cursed thing among you, yeah? There was something in the midst of the people that caused them to lose the fight because the people brought an accursed thing into the camp. They brought an accursed thing in the midst of them. And because of that, they lost. We have brought in a cursed thing within the nation, and that's why we are not progressing the way that we think we should. I have an Ak. Matter of fact, Ak Yermiyahu, a diligent brother. I'm talking about any time I hear anyone talk about Yermiyahu, they speak high praises of my brother. My brother works for the works works for a bank, very financial um, literate. He can help us learn a lot when it comes to this banking industry. Yomi Yahoo should be running a bank for Israelites right now. If we really care so much about what the Most High is doing, we should have opened up a bank and put him on the forefront and allow him to teach our children so they can become bankers, so we can learn how to finance and make loans and do these different things. But we don't think that far ahead. We look at the accolades of one, but we don't see how we can contribute to the one that we can make many. We are supposed to emulate, imitate. I, I, we're supposed to imitate the creator, but we are emulating Israel. We're supposed to match the creator's characteristics. In Exodus um, 34, it says, and we're going to just um, talk about who is the creator and how he is um, recognized. Exodus 34, 6 and 7, it says, Yehoah, Yehoah the compassionate and gracious Elohim, slow to anger, abundant in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. That's how we're supposed to be towards one another. That's how we're supposed to be. When people see us, we're supposed to have that patience for one another, that compassionate for one another. Compassionate towards our women. Slow to anger. Because we know that sometimes our, our, our women can get the best of us, especially in the age that we're living in. When you wasn't born and raised in this world, the way they made us learn, think that we're supposed to treat women is nasty, disgusting, and it's pure filth. But we didn't think that because everything we saw was about that. Degrade our women. Call them out their names. Do all these different things. But now we're coming into this world and we're wondering why our women are so masculine. We're wondering why our women have such animosity towards us. It's because so many decades has happened where we have been putting our foot on them when we should have been carrying them and protecting them like the Most High tells us to. So now we have to learn how to control our anger when it comes to them. We have to know how to be patient with them because our children are seeing our interactions with them. That's exactly what it is to be a servant of Yah. It says in Blockley, it says in Telelim 145, 8 through 9, 
Yahweh is gracious and passionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Yahweh is good to all. He has compassionate on all he has made. We were all created in the image of the Most High. We read that in Genesis 1. So because we see that, that same good that the Most High is to us, we should be to others. Whether they're black, brown, blue, yellow, white. Whether they speak English, Spanish, Arabic, Hebrew, France, French, Chinese. The Most High gave every single nation their lot. We lost our lot that the Most High had given us because the Most High put something on top of us that he didn't put in no other people. Exodus 19, starting at verse 3. Moshe went up to Elohim, and Jehovah called to him out of the mountain, saying, This is what you shall tell the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. We hear this quite often. Then it says, Now therefore... If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. I asked my, I asked my son earlier about that verse. I said, what does that mean? being the kingdom of priests, what's the obligation of a priest? Or what is one of the roles of a priest? He had to think about it. He thought about teaching the Torah. He taught, He spoke about doing sacrifices. But the main thing I wanted him to bring out is being an interseer or a mediator between man and the creator. We are supposed to intercede on the behalf of the other nations. That's why the Most High told Abraham that through his seed, all the nations will be blessed. How are we operating in that? When we're fighting with one another. When we see everyone else coming together and yet we're still dropping the ball year after year. Maury Dawu said this um, a couple of lessons about, or a couple of lessons ago in regards to us serving ourselves as idols. We have put ourselves as idols over the most high. Our selfishness, how our pride, the way that we desire things for us, the way we always come to the most high, like, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. Me, me, me. But we're supposed to do for others. And when we do for others, the Most High will give it back sevenfold if we are doing it righteously with an upright heart. We have an inner problem, but we're too busy focused on outer things. We're looking at what everyone else is doing. We're looking at what everyone else has. We're looking at what everyone else has accomplished. And then we're questioning why we're not getting there because we haven't fixed the inner parts. The Torah talks about the wickedness of men. He the Torah talks about um, in Genesis um, 6 and 5. Yahweh saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that the, every inclination of the thought of human's heart was only evil all the time. Yermiahu 17 and 9, uh, and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? We talk about our uncircum we, we talk about circumcising our heart. That's circumcising the inward part of us. That takes a lot of reflection and meditation, not so much a lot of prayer. Because we know prayer is an outward expression, but meditation is an inward thing seeking to hear the voice of the creator. 
So we need to start meditating, like that we said, on the Torah day and night. Read what it says and internalize it. Ponder on the, the richness or the vastness of it that we may imitate it or emulate it upon the earth. So then we are becoming the living word, that we are becoming the walking Torah, that we are becoming the image of Yahweh on earth. We desire so much, but we give so little. And I'm saying we because I'm part of it. I've been on phone with plenty of brothers and I tell them, I'm focusing on me and my family right now to make sure we get right because there's too much confusion going on out there. I was part of a congregation that split and it happened to me twice because of differences. Because brothers couldn't come together to reconcile. That hurts. Because I have little ones seeing this. They should see Israel coming together with congregations, not coming apart. And there's brothers I know who've been in this walk a lot more than a lot longer than I have that probably have seen worse. The most high is not happy with us. Because we're supposed to be his nation of priests, his kingdom of priests. We're supposed to be the interceders. How many times did the Most High wanted to destroy us? We shouldn't even be here. He told Moshe, I'm going to destroy them all and I'm going to make a nation out of you. Moshe could have been selfish and said, okay. But he said, nah. Because then it will look bad on you. Because you brought us out of Mitzrayim and you want the other nations to be like, he brought them out of, uh, out of bondage just to slay them? He thought about Israel and he thought about the, represent the representation of the creator. And he didn't even get to see the promise. No, he didn't get to lay foot in the promised land. All because of one action. We have something that the Most High desires us to have. But we are not bringing, bringing it forth. We are more acting like Israel, which the Most High has called rebellious, an adulterous woman. Um, stiff neck. Now, let's think about that for a second. If your son, according to Torah, if you have a rebellious son who's a drunkard or a, a drunkard, a parent's supposed to take him to the elders and however they deem fit, you know, they're supposed to stone him with stone until he died. A adulterous woman is supposed to die. He has called us many of things that should be dead, but because he is faithful, because he keeps his word and his word will remain true, he has not utterly destroyed us. That's why when people say, I'm an Israelite, I said, which one are you? Are you the two-thirds or the one-third? Or are you the stranger that's living in the gates. Because here's the thing about the strangers. The strangers choose to live among Israel. They choose to keep the Torah. They choose to do the word of the most high because they don't have, they, they're not obligated to, but they want to be amongst the people because they want to be with the creator. There are more, this is, this is Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul is this um, is this elderly young man um, that I have recently had the pleasure to meet. Pastor Paul has brought me three flags that has the white, 
flag with the blue borders with Yehoah's name in the middle with two uh, menorahs on, uh, menorah on each side. He brought me three flags, one for me, one for my wife, one for my son, and two license plates for our, for our vehicles. He has Yehoah's name on the back of his car. And every single day, he sends me something, not just to me, but to thousands of people around the world proclaiming the name of Yehoah. He said, Yahweh. But he's proclaiming the name of the creator. He walks around with a shofar and he blows it. And you know what he told me one day? Because he 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 does he he does think um Yeshua is Yahweh. That's you know the only thing. But he says Yeshua made a fool of him, so I'm gonna make a fool of me. Because his, his mindset is, if this man could walk the earth and do all these magnificent things, and yet they still sort to kill him like all the other Nabis, then the least he can do is walk him on this earth and proclaim the name of Jehovah. This is a man who grew up in Philly. He is 70 plus years old. And he has a heart for the creator that you would think that he was born and raised an Israelite. But he's a stranger who chooses to keep the Sabbath. He's a stranger who, cho who chooses to keep the feast days. He's a stranger who says, I'm not going to pray to Jesus. I pray to Yahweh. And it's crazy when I see this. Because I'm like, and, and he he connected me to another um, brother that he met. This guy is Cuban. Walking around the town with all white on, with ZZ's on, with a staff. They just happened to come across one another. And the first thing he told me when he introduced to us, he said he used to be a drug cartel. But because of the power and faith of Yahweh, he changed his life around. Now he's walking around, giving the word and the testifying of the glory and the goodness of Yahweh. And I'm over here in tears. Because every time Paul comes around, it's always when something's in my mind or something's happening. And he'll just come up right then and there and, and is with his pure joy itself he will just be like Azar. Remember y'all loves you. Just keep on walking in the light of Yahweh. Every Shabbat he, he hits me up. Azar, I pray you and your family have a blessed Shabbat. This is a man who choose to serve Yahweh. He's not calling himself an Israelite. He calls himself a servant of Yahweh. So when I asked the question initially, if a brother said he no longer wants to be an Israelite, your answers are valid. And I agree 100%. But a question I will ask them also is, but do you still believe in Yahweh? Or has that changed? Do you still believe in the mercy and the compassion and the favor of our Elohim? Do you believe in the Almighty? And if they says Cain, then let Most High be with you and grant you peace in your journey. When they say, I don't longer believe in the Most High, that's when we need to do everything else that we were just discussing. Because I'd rather be a servant of the Most High. I'd rather be a servant of the Almighty. I'd rather be a sojourner amongst Israel than be counted amongst the two-thirds that will die from pestilence and by the sword. But the Most High is refining us. That's why we are going 
through the fire. That's why we're going through the pressure. That's why life is happening to us the way it is, because the Most High is trying to build us up that we may be that strong nation. We have to know how to intercede for one another. We have to know how to pray for one another. Sar Naaman, that's my teacher. I see him every Shabbat praying for people by name. I've heard him pray for multiple people on this line. Throughout the, whatever you may go through, the loss of a loved one, a health situation, if you let him know what you're going through, he's praying for you. He's interceding on your behalf. He is being a servant to the creator for the people. Shai Shamar, since I've known him, anytime they say you need to pray, we need someone to pray, he's jumping up ready. And his prayers are heard even on the morning, on, on the afternoon call. Uziel will wake up in the morning and pray. So Yohanan will make sure the morning call, the morning prayers there, the afternoon prayers there, the evening pray, the evening calls and everything. He's gonna make sure you know. And he's gonna make sure you love him. And I can go on and on about every brother on here because we all love one another, but most importantly, we love the most high. We are trying to be that righteous representation. We are trying to be who the creator told us to be and not being who our ancestors were. Because I don't want to be rebellious. That's death. I don't want to be an adulterous woman. That's death. I don't want to be egotistical and selfish end up doing something that's going to bring upon death. The reason why Israel, Israel has not been able to get past the, the, the beginning stages of building is because we still have this accursed thing amongst us, which is our pride and ego, which has become an idol. And I say so likely to anybody that I may have offended in my time, not even just on this call, but in general, I'm not perfect. I have things that go on in my life that takes me away from being an ock. Because at those times in my life, I'm trying to not to fall, to break to the pressures that is happening in my life. But I want you to know I love you all. And I love your families. I love your children. I would do anything to protect, to provide, to help any one of you brothers on this line or any brother that we know. And I don't care about what book you in. Because that's petty. I don't care what Shabbat you keep. That's petty. I don't care what fringes your zits you wear, because that's petty. I care about your safety. I care about your life. I care about your ruach. I care about your relationship with the creator. We got to start being 10 toes down in this. If we see people portraying our image poorly, we need to be able to confront them and rebuke them in love. Fuck, that's not the way we're supposed to act. I'm tired of constantly seeing debates. Why are we debating? That's why I, 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 I like um, Isha and Mori Yeshtak. Mori Isha, Mori Yeshtak. They got this new thing on um, Young Rashawn called Iron sharpens iron. They don't debate. They just compare scriptures and they build. And they talk on tough subjects that we need to be working on. They may not agree, but they see where each other's differences are coming on and they know that it's coming out of love. But when I see these things like such and such debate this one, such and such destroy this one, such and such, 
all that is folly. And that just means that person is only trying to show how much bigger and better they are than the next man. But that's not fixing the problems internally. We got to clean up house or we're going to perish and destroy just like our forefathers have done. So are we going to emulate and imitate the creator with his compassion, with his love, with his mercy, with his forgiveness? Or are we going to imitate the rebellious and adulterous woman of Israel? Which is the accursed thing that is keeping us from actually operating in the blessings. We have a lot of work to do. And that work cannot be done alone. I can't be there to till the land due to my work schedule. I'm not always able to make the payment. But when I have it, I got it, I give it. If a brother's going through something and he needs someone to talk to, call me, I'm there. I talk to people at work. I talk to people when I'm home. If you got an emergency, hit me up, text me 911. I need help. And I got you. And that's the same response that we should have towards one another. This is not about me. This is about us. I know I've been able to call brothers when I'm going through things and they've been able to talk me out of some things. That's what I can do. A strong fence. So this is where I'm landing my plane. Are we going to imitate, emulate and imitate the almighty, the sovereign of the universe, the image that we were created in? Or are we going to perpetuate the cycle of this curse mentality that has been passed on from generation to generation? Because if we don't get it right, we're just going to pass it on to our children. And then they're going to have to figure it out. Going back to what Saul Yosef said, Deuteronomy 6, we're supposed to show them, not through words, but through actions. We're not supposed to just read the Torah. We're supposed, or we're supposed to keep the Torah, keep the covenant. There's an action. These are the things that we must do. There's no good in reading something that you don't do. It's no different if you didn't read it at all. But remember, there are people who have never read the Torah in their life. But they operate in Torah principles, and we see it every day. Being a representation of the Creator is not a difficult task. It shouldn't be a burden. It should be a blessing. So we have to find a way to remove this yoke upon the necks of our brothers and sisters who see this walk as a burden. Because the Torah is not an accursed thing. The Torah is not a burden. The Torah is the key to life. And those who keep it, eat of its fruit. And with that, I say, Torah, Yah, for the, for the creator of heaven and earth, the almighty Yehovah, who have given me these thoughts, these words to come before you as a brother. May each and every one of y'all be blessed. May your household be blessed. And may he continue to work in us, through us, and for us as we learn how to do that for each other. And with that, I say shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Akeen, Akeen, the floor is open for any uh, comments or questions. Uh, 
Hello, yeah. Kavod, yeah, Israel. King of the world. Who deserves nothing but the utmost respect and honor. Who created us in his glory. So we can be the true representation of him on earth. My brother Zariyahu, God is my help, spoke words of truth, words of wisdom, spoke from the Ruach of Elohim. The Spirit of the Most High was definitely upon him. And the way he posed the question in the beginning, really had no idea that he will bring it from the angle that he brought it from. But the angle was an angle of truth. And if we're truly going to be a priest to the nations, then it's definitely, as your Most High spoke through the words of his prophet, that he's great beyond the borders of Israel. And it's a reminder that, as Sasha Mar stated, it's really not about the people, it's about the glory of Yah. And it's definitely not about the individual gain and prosperity or recognition that a lot of us get caught up in. So I thank the creator for blessing you to bring these words that we can just really ingest and take in and lay the heart toward off again for the reminder of meditation be at peace, to be quiet, to listen, to act on what's right. Told off for the inspiration, your words of kindness that you spoke even concerning myself and the other brothers on the line. I pray that the Most High will allow us to walk into our purpose so we can benefit this nation. That is one of my ultimate goals, to have a bank one day, to open the bank economics for our people. Cause that's what we're gonna need as a nation, along with controlling our food supply, along with our education, along with being understanding how to run the govern a government to truly become sovereign. Thank you for the reminder of, as I mentioned last week in my dissertation, like where are you? You kind of brought that out in your your words of wisdom. Are you that man in the gate? Are you that man that want to be amongst Israel? Are you truly the one third that's not going to be purged away in the wilderness? Are we truly represented in the way that our children are, are feeding from the fruit that the Most High is allowing us to bear? Lead them by example. I mean, truly representing God the right way. And I yield on this, as you mentioned about the brother Paul, the most I bless and keep him. I don't even know him, but I love it. When Yaakov, our forefather, left for Don Aram to go back to his land, go see his Abba, when he finally decided to leave his dold, his uncle Laban, him and his Nashim and his Yeladim. And the most I came to Laban and told him, you don't speak nothing good or bad to that man when you see him, right? But when they sat down together and they broke bread and they had that their pack and they said, me the most high, watch between me and thee while we're absent one for another. My bond spoke in the name of his deity. And of course, Yaakov spoke in the name of the almighty God. Yeah. But what Yaakov didn't do is make his uncle, who is in his own right serving his deity, make him feel like what you're doing is, is invalid, right? He just allowed his light to shine. And that's what you told us tonight. It doesn't really matter about our religious persuasion. It's all really about our character, our lifestyle, and how we truly represent Yah. So told our open arm, my brother. Told our Rabbi. Spirit of the Most High was definitely on you this evening. And I appreciate 
just a reminder. I appreciate the wisdom, the counsel, and just for even allowing us to, to bear those words this evening. So with that, I yield. We should go to our king. To our king. So, total blessing, Adele, total, total blessing. Um, the two points that stood out to me was when you talked about uh, being like the most high. Um, that stuck with me because I know oftentimes, you know, we, we're in the walk, you know, but at the end of the day, we have to walk in the image of the most high regards of whatever advice um, or counsel is given by any party, you know. That's the, the standard we're living up to, the image of the most high in regards to you know, what any man or woman says, you know, or whatever the position is. So that, that stuck with me. And also, um, when you talked about order, you talked about, you know, the sloppiness. And, uh, you know, I, I've seen it, but one thing I also thought about, you know, it starts, you know, starts with me, because I know I could be more organized. I thought about, you know, I have sticky notes on top of sticky notes, you know, this plan, this plan. You know, sometimes, you know, it could be overwhelming. So that's one thing I thought about, you know, just being more organized with plans and things, you know, what needs to get done, what can what can wait, you know. So all praise to the Most High for bringing out the lesson. And the Most High bless and keep you. And as well as the other brothers that don't want to call it, but at the points, you know, are you... Yeah, I told her I can. Told her. I appreciate both of you brothers. I really do. Um, a, a thought just came to my mind um, after listening to you brothers. And I, it was a point that I wanted to bring out, but I, I failed to do so. And that was um, the blessings that we're supposed to receive from the Most High is not a blessing for our, us. It's a blessing that we're supposed to help give others. So when the Most High increase us, he increases us in order for us to be able to increase others. And that's how we allow those blessings to continue to flow between one another. You know, we're not supposed to harbor these things that the Most High has given us. We're supposed to freely give them to those that the Most High has placed in our lives because that's how we show the love of the Most High. That's how we operate in the image of the Most High, by freely giving. Um, towards one another. So I really do want to say I appreciate your words. Aki. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give all praise on the team to the most high. Yah, bless this set apart name. Um, Adon, I just want to let you know I heard your heart, I felt your Ruach tonight, the Ruach of the most high upon you. Um, I've been hearing your heart for years now. You know what I'm saying? And you just have a, a one of those sincere hearts and you you full of love uh and that's what Torah is actually supposed to do it's supposed to be a heart transplant to the point where it teaches us really how to love one another and like you said uh there's some of us who have experienced uh possibly more than a couple of divisions you experienced and you know m in my time in you do get kind of burnt out with all the debates all the negativity all the division uh the finger pointing you know uh if you're not with this school you know all that kind of stuff that's not really what the most high the most high's word is not here for us to have all these divisions that's man that's us that's ego that's pride um and so if we really want to uh like you say receive blessings we have to actually be what the most high called us to be and that's set apart unto him and like you said being a servant we just need to be servants to the most high and start trying to serve ourselves our titles our names you know uh making a name for ourselves um, and we have to actually humble ourselves and understand what the purpose of the Torah is for. Um, and before we can actually even go to people, a lot of times it has to start with us. You know, we have to, like you said, it's internal. I like the fact that you did that. A lot of people think about outwardly things, outwardly appearance. Uh, what what can you do for me, Most High? What can you do for me, my Creator? Things like that. But it's supposed to be internal. The Torah is supposed to first change us from within, and then without we show forth that we are righteous to the Most High. Yeah. By the way, we love Him. By the way, we love one another by the way we love mankind as a nation of priests uh, is supposed to. So I just, again, man, keep, keep the passion, um, keep it coming. Um, I, I hope that, you know, you have opportunity to present it 
on more platforms that because really like elders and leaders need to hear that coming from the younger Akim. Like, you know, enough is enough. It's time for some people to, you know, y'all know I'm a little bit different. It's time for some people to sit down and shut up. It's basically what it is because they're, they're like you said, the children, uh, our children, if we don't fix it, then it's still going to be left to the children. And we are children of of someone. So we should be trying to get it fixed so our children don't have to keep going through the same cycle. So I just think it was a, a overall good presentation. Um, it was heartfelt. Uh, it was much needed. Uh, it was encouraging, you know, eye opening, uh, and it provoked a lot of thought, you know. And like I said, you know, we've had conversations before, just sitting at um at Sukkot talking about differences of beliefs, and you know, we've always did it with Shalom talking about the differences in the community. Um, and when you said the part about it, don't matter which side of the book you come come from, that is one thing that has to cease also because if the brother still not your brother, if if they're coming out of one side of the book or they're coming out of both sides of the book. So you disown someone because of they're coming out of the side of the uh, out of another side of the book that you might not subscribe to, but the first side of the book tells you how to still love your brother. It still gives commandments for the community. So regardless of what that is, how else can we? And that's the reason why we have this call tonight. Part of the reason for the call tonight is for brothers to build relationships first, build brotherhoods, so that we can discuss certain things and get to some of the sensitive matters. But but a lot of times brothers can't even do that, you know what I'm saying, because they can't even express the love of the creator and they can't even express love one for another. And I'm just going to share uh, just from my perspective. I feel like any man, you know, and I'm just going to say this now, any man that that uh, that presents and we listen to and everyone humbles themselves and respectfully tries to hear the word because we can learn from anybody, to be honest with you, if we just pay attention, everything that a person brings forth may not be correct. But you can still glean something out of it because if any of it is true, the portion that's true is still true. And so what I'm saying is when a man is presenting and if, if a man is listening to us present, 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 the least we need to do is attentively listen, listen to another man present. And what I've what I've seen sometimes, you know, I've seen sometimes when somebody says something that we don't agree to, a lot drop off the call. And we need to stop that just as a brother, like, first of all, to present before an audience of other men. Sometimes it's not easy, especially when you know you may have different views. But if some men humble themselves to listen to someone who views different from theirs and they listen attentively to the whole thing and, and get off in shalom, then we all owe that one to another because we might be missing something. But still, it's just a, a matter of respect and a matter of love, you know. And so these are the type of things that uh, we need to hear because what happened is we, we're making ourselves too smart. We're getting too legalistic. You know what I'm saying? And we're not actually doing the basis of the commandments. We're not loving the creator and we're not loving one another by the way we conduct sometimes. So I don't, I think you did a, a great presentation. Um, it was, it was uh, definitely thought provoking and to keep up the good, good job of Don. And uh, I heard you make a statement and you know, I uh, we love you as well. So if you need any of us, you already know, Aki, we're here for you. All praise, honesty to the most high. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told her, I told her about, hey, it, you know, we definitely be having our conversations um, and there's all love. So that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Um, is there anyone else? Uh, if not, I'll do the closing to Fila. Um, okay, you got uh, more in hand. Y'all have his hand up. Okay. Hey, Moray, you got the flow. Okay, I couldn't find the mute button. My phone's been acting up. They didn't drop me 15 times off the call. But hallelujah, I just want to say, Salakia, Adon, we're missing the first part, but as we spoke earlier, I'm very excited about the whole lesson. I knew because we spoke earlier, so I got a, you know, a heartfelt um you know, conversation that we had earlier this week. And um, I just want you to be encouraged. You know what I'm saying? Stay encouraged. Stay stepping out where you're supposed to. Stay, you know what I'm saying, doing your portion, you know? And I'm, you know what I'm saying, reiterate what my brother, Maurice Samant, just told you. We love you too. And I told you the other day, man, you put life in me when we had our phone call. We spoke for, I think, almost two hours. You put life into me when we had our conversation. 
So be encouraged because you encouraged me. And that's all I have to say. So that I tell that you have your life. I know I appreciate it. Um, y'all speak life into me too. So it, it's an equal exchange and there is no robbery between that. So I say hallelujah. Cohen got his hand up, Aki. Yeah, it's a long time. Prayerfully, everyone can hear me. I'm just now getting in, and so I'm just trying to have a meal and listen to everything that's been said. I missed some things, but I think I got the gist of the message. I'm not sure of the brother's name, but just wanted to say my name is Sadok Hakohen. I'm a priest that uh, lives in uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been in this way for quite some time. But I hear your fire and your zeal for the creator. And I just want to continue to always inspire my brothers. You know, we come from a lot of different backgrounds, but ultimately, Yah knows we're just trying to serve him and get back to what we're trying to do. And so my encouragement would always be that, you know, we serve Yah and we serve Yah's interests because there's an interest that Yah has on this planet so that we maintain focus and we just support each other and love each other. And where we disagree that we would have a listening ear to say, you know, that's sound wisdom or that's not wisdom. And how do we still share and be brothers? How do we still, you know, maintain love amongst one another? And that's within our spirits. And so I heard your spirit today, brother. And I just say again, be encouraged that Yah Yahuwah will support you. Uh, and But as men, we have to be honest and secure in what we need to be as men, men and servants of Yah. And that is to maintain being focused and maintain just being true to oneself. That's very, very important is to be true to yourself. You can't lie to yourself can't lie and say another man is worse than, than me so I can mistreat him and I can make him feel so no we we got to be honest and true so that Yah Yahuwah our creator will see the sincerity within ourselves and we can work on that next level and where we don't agree Yah will make it clear that's the power of our creator he can make anything clear to any man Every man can be subdued to the power of Yah. Ain't no man outside of the realms of the power of Yah. I don't care how we think of ourselves or we how we view ourselves. The creator is the master. And so as long as we humble ourselves to him, his idea, his interests, we're going to win. And so it's good to hear younger brothers and, you know, counterparts he is speaking about the greatness of Yah because now I can see that we're working on a, on a plateau of we're winning. I want to win. I'm sure all the brothers that's on the call want to win. We will. We just got to stay in line with our creator. Hallelujah. Stay encouraged, brother. Continue to work on Yah's behalf and you'll see your O is going to manifest itself in ways that you've never even could comprehend. Hallelujah. So left. Um, yeah, I told her, I told her, boy, hey, uh, for your wisdom and your words. And it's me, Azaria, who we have met several times. <laughs> uh, I, still I know, you. I know. I, <laughs> that, you know, I told you, I'll be speaking to you, and this just happened to be one of those evenings you're speaking, and so... You just keep working, bro. We need all the soldiers. We don't need just the generals or the captains. We need the soldiers, the soldiers that's in the trenches and the soldiers that's going to remind the leaders at the top, like, yo, 
because we're all leaders in our own right. So I love you, brother, and I appreciate you. And so y'all is blessing you. I see it. Your family is expanding. <laughs> it's expanding. And so it's expanding in the glorification of Yah. So be enthused, be encouraged to know that Yah is with you. And I just want to share this last note, if I can, in all love and humility. Everybody is not on the same page. Some people are in kindergarten. Some people got to live back in kindergarten. <laughs> it's hard to perceive, but it happens. Some people go to middle school, then they get left back in middle school. Some people go to high school, and then they get held back. But is the message clear that I, I need to excel? I need to move myself forward. And as it was said, I, I'm just that kind of guy. I remember the messages that were given last week and the week before that. Iron sharpens iron. You might not have the title of Moray on you, but you just taught a powerful lesson that I think even a Maureen and a Kohanim can glean from. And that's what we all need to gather from. No man is better than the other, but every man is to be here to sharpen another. Appreciate you, bro. Glad to hear you. And that's what we need to remember. We all sharpen each other, no matter what. Hallelujah. 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 Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm going to close this out with Tefila. All hearts and minds clear. Blessed be you, Yehovah. Blessed be your name, Yehovah. For you are the sovereign of all things. You are the almighty one who is the giver and the receiver of life. You are the instructor of the Torah. And we are your humble servants coming before you on this evening. To proclaim and say Toda Rabbah for life. For the opportunity to come together as men, as brothers, as fathers, as husbands, as uncles. That we may glean from one another. That we may be able to share with one another. That we may be able to build with one another upon your word. That we may strengthen the bonds amongst one another but also that we may be the building blocks that help strengthen the bonds of the nation that you have called your own possession. Forgive us for the times where we have lacked, for our trespasses that have been done knowingly and unknowingly that has been displeasing to you, for the ways of our ancestors that have fell short on many occasions. For we know that your wrath is a consuming fire, but we also know that your grace, your mercy, and your long suffering is above all things. So we are so thankful that you have not consumed us in your wrath, for we do not take it for granted. But we ask that you use that fire that is upon your wrath to be what refines us, to purify us, to remove the blemish, to remove the impurities, that we may be the tools that are needed for you to do the work that must be done amongst the nations, that we may be the people that intercede on behalf of the other nations, that we may be able to intercede on behalf of one another, that we may be able to put ourselves to the side and put you first and foremost above all things, for all honor, glory, and esteem belongs to you. For you are our creator, the almighty Elohim of the heaven and earth. You are the one who has given us a living spirit, that is within us, that we may be able to commune with you. So speak to us by opening our ears, by opening our eyes, 
by opening our hearts that we may be able to hear, see, and receive the word that you have already placed within us, that we may share it amongst one another, that we may learn how to love and heal one another, that we may be able to fix the imbalance that has been placed, for we know a false balance is an abomination in your eyes, and we do not want to be that abominable thing before you. So we ask that you just fix our hearts, fix our marriages, heal our elders, strengthen our younger generations, allow us to be the nation that you can look upon and say, that is the apple of my eye. That is my treasured possession. That is my peculiar treasure. As your word is the word of truth and your Torah is the key to life. Allow your Torah to be downloaded into our minds and in our hearts that we may know them and do them daily. In the times where we fall short, that we are able to reflect on it, that we may be able to see the things that we have done and come before you in a repentant state, that we may be able to show and show you that we are truly sorrowful for our actions. For we know that you are just Elohim. And that all your doings is just in all things. So may you watch over your people in all creation. May you unite our minds, our bodies, and our spirits that we may be properly aligned with you. That we may be the people. That we may be the individuals. That we may be the community and the nation that you desire us and that you need us to be. Not just for this generation, but for the generations to come. That when the younger generation and the generation to come will hear of our story, they will hear of the story of the Israelites that did come from the north, the ones who did Teshub, the ones that did turn back to their Elohim in the midst of the captivity, the ones that did seek to put themselves to the side all for the glory and honor and esteem of your holy Zebaoth, that they may be able to recognize your power in bringing us out once again. For all things must be done for your name's sake. May you give us rest, rejuvenate our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, and be prepared to lie down for the evening. May you watch over our loved ones. May you heal them, comfort them in their time. May you be with our brothers and sisters who are going through medical changes. May you be with the ones who are dealing with financial issues. May you be with the ones who are dealing with homing issues, family issues, all the different things that are happening amongst the people, the things that you see and you see alone. May you allow your spirit to be placed within us that we may be used to help in any capacity that is needed to be helped. That we may be able to say that we are coming, not in our own spirit, but the spirit of the most of the most high, Jehovah's ever owned. With all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, we proclaim that you are Elohim, that you are the almighty power, the creator of the heaven and earth, the holy one of Israel, our father, our instructor, our master. And that we put none before you and that we keep you first in all things. May your name be honored. May your name be glorified. And your, may your name be esteemed. Baruch Atah Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Blessed be you, Yahuwah. And blessed be your name, Yahuwah. Now and forever. Hallelujah. 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 Salam. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh -oh. I, I think um, Cohen got his hand up. Okay. Shalom, I'm not. Uh, I'm just, I, I know y'all all know that I love to be quiet and love to listen. So I want to thank my brother. It's our Yahweh for everything, you know, his words. I know we're inspired by Yah, his prayer, all of it. And so for those that may not know, there's an event going on here in the Carolinas that has been inspired by the brothers in Shiloh coming up the Martin Luther King weekend in January, I believe the 14th and 15th. Um, it's all over the book, um, Facebook that is. Um, and so 
please share the word. It's a very important topic that we're trying to address, and that is, you know, strengthening the Israelite family, but more importantly, reconnecting the Israelite family with their Yah-given purpose. And so families, friends, whether they have the persuasion that we are or not, I think it's very important that we share because we are supposed to be a light unto the nation. So just keep that in mind. We need to be focused more on just sharing the information and not so much how many souls show up. I think that's a negative thing that we work, we look at, at with the fact that, oh, there's only 25 people showed up, but that was 20, that's 25 souls and maybe 50 souls or maybe 75 souls or 100 souls that were impacted by the message that's going to be conveyed. And so, it may be some time between now and that and that particular time, January 14th, 15th, I believe the dates are. That's on the internet. But I think it's very important that we share what the topic is, and that's building strong black slash Israelite families. And so um if I if I'm not remiss, please share that information so that you know we can get it out there and we can get as many of our people involved as possible to change the dynamics of our family. Hallelujah and Torah about for the opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I believe I have a flyer for that. So um, if I don't, I know my Isha, my Isha has one. So I'll put it in the mention group uh, once I receive that. Hallelujah. I told everybody again, just share it to your grandmother, share it to your aunt, share it to your nephews, and share it to everyone because this is going to be a serious, this is a very serious topic that we just need to address within our own families. And, you know, just not only knowledgeable Israelites need to hear it, but our people as a whole. So just share. And I came. Lala Tob, I came. May the most high be with you all. Whatever about Gamlaka. Lala Toba Shabu I told I came. No, 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 no,